Welcome to another Pint with Shoney B. I've got a really cool guest today, uh, one of Britain's, the world's leading graffiti artists. I'm not even sure where I'd use that word anymore, but he's been at the forefront of that area and all stuff. He's a creator, he's an artist, and he makes things, and he's a all-round renaissance kind of guy. He's done lots of stuff with his life, some good, some bad. And I'm welcoming to the podcast Dot Masters. Hello, Sean. We're having vodka. We are. It's a, not a pint with Shawnee B. It's a, it's a crouching. It's, yeah, we. I, I had a couple of crouchers, and we bought. We're in a hotel that doesn't sell booze, so we have a sparkling water and some vodka. So we are drinking. Yeah, a bit of background noise, but we're out in a nice little garden in, uh, near Liverpool Street Station in London. How are you? Good. What are you making right now? I am making stuff for Monica Art Fair, which is a. Uh, it's probably one of the only uh, graffiti or urban art or. However, you yeah. What's the right? What, what, what should I be mm, saying? Yeah. It's, it, people, you can't get arrested for urban art. Is that well, a nice way? No, of, you can get arrested for most things, but right. it's a stri- <laughs> they call it. The, I think the one that, that nobody minds too much is street art. Oh, although, for a while, people get asked off with street art, and they call it. They want to go urban art because it often means a lot more than street art. You can have like 3D models this yeah. type of the plastic the famous one in New York with the little girl that won all the awards at Cannes this year the oh, defiant yeah, yeah. girl or whatever it was yeah I mean well, is that just wank because it's too commercial you uh, don't know I mean that that was an ad campaign was yeah. I mean that really was to get a more market share for the particular branding company what was the company it called? was some company in, in the financial services thing but they are talking about it as keeping it up because it, 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 mm. it hits sort of, such mm. a nerve and mm. I, I think as an ad guy, that's probably as big an accolade as you can get for a piece of advertising. I mean, yeah. it rarely happens. Yeah, no, that's true. I and mean, there's no fucking name on it. No, but I mean, that's, that's the, the, the funny thing is between street art and I think graffiti's been a, a growing thing. But I think a lot of artists saw their streets being invaded by advertising and have used the same modus operandi on their own works you know it's like it's very brand driven if you think yeah. of Banksy or Cause yeah. or Deface or you know they they all tend to have either a signifying image or a like Cause the crosses on the eyes I mean he can get any cartoon he wants and put two crosses on the eyes and suddenly it's a Cause original it is a branding methodology but tagging I mean is, is yeah, branding it's a brand. yeah. yeah your work has been likened to by me and maybe some others too Banksy a little bit is yep. that fair yep. you do a lot of stencil stuff and I have done a lot of stencil stuff which is more like my mother used to teach silk screening so right. as a kid on days off from school I'd be given projects so I'd have to make a t-shirt so I'd cut a, a stencil and yeah. then you can put the paper into the silk screen and pull one or two things off it I mean the paper disintegrates but that was the first time I cut a stencil and then um, and you know Banksy I met him. You've met him, right? Yeah. Does he like your work? Uh, he wrote great work on a print he gave me once, which was kind of quite funny. It's quite a, it's quite astonishing in today's age of everyone knowing everyone's fucking business that he's still. I mean, he's he's not he's nearly out, but not quite. No, he's out. Is he? Yeah, he's is out. he. All right. Well, I still don't know who the. No, fuck is. the Daily Mail outed him a long time ago. The thing is, is everybody wants this Robin Hood character. Nobody yeah. wants to know the man behind the mask. The man yeah. in the mask is is is. is, is Celebrities are not celebrities. I mean, everyone's a bloody celebrity now. So it's like to have this one guy who's. And when he came out first, I had this theory that he was, he was lots of people, uh, w- with with Charlie Satchi pulling the, uh, the strings. Well, the, the the the. Because the one thing about stenciling is it does it. it, it, it anyone can. Yeah, once you've created it, anyone can bang it up anyway. Yeah. I mean, whether he paints his own stuff on the street now is a mute point, really. It doesn't really matter. Well, that's a Warhol, dude. He had a whole bunch of people. Yeah, no, fucking, totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, it, there's definitely a team around him. So you were saying Monaco. Sorry, we got Monaco, sidetracked. Yeah, always get, bang- oh, always get sidetracked by Mr. B. Eh? <laughs> um, so Monica is a kind of London's only street art trade show type of thing basically it's galleries who sell this stuff okay. taking up stands and okay. hunting their stuff out there's probably a few live painting things so it's happening on the 5th of October oh, okay. so I've got a month so I'm, I've, I had a meeting with a gallerist today I'm creating a kind of a Victorian lounge to I'm actually creating a scene and then hanging my pictures in the scene Great. rather than just eight campuses on the wall yeah. I want it to kind of bring M&esque 
Tracy yeah. Eminem. Well, Go and make your bed, Tracy, will you? For yeah. fuck's sake. Come on. <laughs> I actually really like Tracy Eminem's bed. I yeah. it's a very, very strong piece of work. There's just this great thing about it. We, we, we've had conversations about this before, about what constitutes art. Em and Hurst, even Banksy, they all kind of emerged at around roughly the same time, mm. right? A lot of yeah, it out YBA's, of Bristol. YBA's Sensation Show, that was a little bit earlier. Hurst was, did start the Freeze Show with all that lot. And Banksy was, I suppose, I suppose the first time I really saw him painting out was, yeah, uh, mid-90s. Yeah. The, what, what caused the, the, the jump between... Like, because I, I remember us having a conversation once, and my views on graffiti are, I don't... I love it if it's good, but mm. I can't stand it when it's just some prick putting anal beads on a wall or something yeah. in, a, in a spray can badly. And yeah. you disagree with that well I quite like tagging I enjoy the calligraphy or the the actual hand style yeah I get quite a kick out of that I mean I, I buy silk screens of tags right you know, just so just so for those listening a tag is basically every graffiti artist has a signature which is their thing so everyone knows it's that person can, can be a logo or character it doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be words right there's the mighty mighty mo that does the big monkeys they're all over right. this place uh, ben Ein used to do just a, quite an elaborate S. You know, there's lots of... lots of. Uh, so the Daily Mail reader, let's just use the Daily Mail as the fucking slagging machine here, would we all, oh, it, it's disrupting, you know, defacing things and making, you know, Lao Tzu go around with cans and fucking up the world and blah, blah, blah. Give us the, give us the uh, street art response to that bullshit. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean... You you know, how many people bought a Louis Vuitton bag with the Louis Vuitton tag on it? That was a yeah. graffiti artist from New York. Stussy clothing? Mm-hmm. Do people know Stussy? I mean, that is just a tag. I and mean, yeah. there's nothing else behind that apart from one guy's tag. So, okay, let's, do, but okay let's go back to... So, I think that the fact that a lot of it has gone mainstream, I can get because I'm an ad guy. And pe- ad, the people ad industry buy into is, obsession as well. If yep. you want to write your name over every wall in the whole of the town, someone's they're going to know you. And that's, that's, you know, it's all, in the old days, it was king of the line. You know, you'd, you'd ride one of the tube stations in, in New York, the L train or whatever, and you'd try and get up on every station, every surface, every single part yeah. of the interior thing. You'd try and be king of the line. And this was an early recognized kind of accolade that, 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 that you would wear. Was that a game? It's territorial. I mean, a lot of it's, got, I suppose, New York fueled it because... New York fueled it for all the gang stuff and stuff like that. It was a good way of messaging between different turfs and yeah. stuff like that. So you'd know you were going into a certain area from the people that were up in that area. And yet it was one of the things that Giuliani had in his sights when he said, we're going to fucking clean up the city. Absolutely. We're going to the broken window thing and the fair well, the, the broken fair windows dodgy. are pretty, pretty crappy. Everyone always cites a broken window, but they right. actually did this thing. They got a street corner and they made it look crappy and it got crappier. And they had that one test case and that was it. It's, it's not, you know, it's, it's just one observation right. on one street corner in one particular part of the world. But ever since then, it was if you come up with a theory that all immigrants are taking your job, there's going to be a certain part of society that are going to want that to be true because they feel dispossessed by that immigration, yeah. for instance. So. Broken window. It's 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 mm. the authorities want to believe it, so it's it's something that's always taken in. Plus, it creates work for your local maintenance crew. Oh yeah, yeah. Your graffiti cleaning business in London is billions. Yeah, and it's yeah. like well, actually we haven't got enough money for hospitals. I remember they what they. Are we doing? What are we doing? I remember one of the things they did was they 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 came up with this new solvent that if you get it on the paint quickly, so they were all painting the trains mm. and they just wait the guys who go to the rail yards and do it and they they just kick back and wait let them finish mm. and then before the train left they just go in and pour fucking this stuff over and all the stuff would dribble well, off now the train surfaces in New York the New York, New York subway station put out a uh, competition to technology companies to come up with a unpaintable surface so there was a team in MIT that developed the chrome surface on the front on the on the surface of trains. It's impossible to leave a mark. Right. Train writers won't write those trains because it's a waste of time. In the old days, everyone used to steal their paint. Now people buy it. But it's like if you're going to go to all the, or if you're going to go and do a crime in order to get your paint and then break, do another crime to break in and then do another crime <laughs> to put this paint on top, you at least want 
that all that effort and risk yeah. to result in something that's going to go around the town. But this is what they would say, they were trying to break their hearts. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. But they, yeah, I mean, it's there's still a lot of graffiti in New York, but it's, yeah. not, it's not on the trains. My, my problem with it, and I don't, I'm not like a fucking Daily Mail reader. I love Banksy's work and I love the joy and the way it makes you think and I love anything that stops me and makes me think. Oh. But when I went to Rome... <laughs> Yeah. I just went like it's destroyed. You're, yeah, it is fucked by it, and it's, yeah. it, 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 you could do stuff in Rome that would be really yeah. fucking Roman. You know, you could have yeah, guys yeah. on top. You could do stairs. You, you, know. you could do. But all it's sorts just of all that. fucking shit, and it's yeah, on. The, yeah. It's on like monuments that have been there for a year. You go fuck off. Like that's just yeah. not. But you're. You, but I just love so that you you're, to, you're. Yeah, but you have to remember, like a kid that grows up outside the Acropolis or the, what, yeah, not yeah. the it's, it's, it's just, just the fucking Acropolis. It's just the fucking Acropolis, yeah. and it's like, well, if we're going to go and stick some, I know that the Acropolis is in Greece, but it's a similar type of thing. If you've got you've got the Amphitheater, the you know the Colosseum, it's just it's just another place to go. Well, Greece is worse, actually. Athens is worse. Ath- I mean, the funny thing is, is I know graffiti artists from both Rome and Athens, and I, when I go to Athens and I go to Rome, I go to places where I see amazing work, where the authorities will give them time to paint. Yeah. Now, if you criminalise something that people are doing anyway, if you if you take it on a drugs analogy, Hot or whatever, yeah, yeah, then people are going to go to festivals where there's less police. They're gonna, or they're going to go to crack houses and do crack on their own. They're not going to sit in the street and do it. Mm. They're going to be furtive about it. So if you're running around town with a can at night and you know that you can't, you're not going to get allowed enough time to make something beautiful. You're just going to put a mark on it. So in Shoreditch, I mean, if you walk around Shoreditch, there's I love so, it. Yeah, there's yeah. so much. There's yeah. so much. And, and I was in Miami. Oh. You've been over to Miami. Yeah. That, wow. like that whole area is amazing. Yeah, it's it's you know? brilliant. Yeah, it's so there's, there's, a, there's a place called Wynwood in, in a suburb. It actually was a broken down suburb of it's Miami really that they horrible. turned into an art epicenter. And the first thing they did was they said, bring in the graffiti artists and let them do wow. what they want. Actually, the guy who did Wynwood was a property developer. He bought a lot of the area, some significant chunks of the area. And he was a big art collector right. and a street art fan. His idea was the regentrification of the area through street art. So he started Windward Walls, which was backed by his property maintenance company. They had all, obviously, because they're a property maintenance company, they have all the cherry pickers and all that type of stuff. Paint's not that expensive in America. Yeah. So he started that up. I mean, that's been going 12, 13 mm. years now. Now, if you go two blocks north of Windward, Yeah, no, I know, I have. Jesus I know. Christ, I that's know. scary shit. Yeah. And then you're there on a Saturday... And it's full of everyone in shorts and little tank tops yeah. and everyone doing selfies by the latest work to go up by Shep Ferry. And yeah, it's yeah. like everyone's really excited. You walk four blocks and I you're know. shot. You're yeah, dead. I know, I know. Probably scary. Yeah. I think the other thing I told you about was that, I'm trying to make it an example, but if you're like a uh, crap at something, the, 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 the sort of egalitarian nature of graffiti art is anyone can do it my view is and, and, and that's why I'm surprised that the people who are at the top of the game don't go mate fucking learn your trade in your back garden more before you come out they but, do. but like, I don't see it you know? no 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 but you dead I mean I we would do, we do the, I do this festival in Norway as we were saying before it's like uh, new art and I remember one artist who I, I won't mention the names because it was cutting mm. and this guy's walked past this guy's exhibit in the gallery and just looked at him and gone <laughs> go back to street art school yeah. and it's like yeah things get said everyone's everyone's got beef everyone's yeah. moaning at everyone else his stuff he's biting me biting means you're taking someone's idea yeah you know oh, I've done butterflies you're doing butterflies now yeah. it's like come on mate it's been done it's been done it's been done oh, I was doing that five years ago it's like yeah but Warhol, Warhol did it all and now everyone's whatever it's how did you get into it I got into it just through tacking really I was in Brighton I didn't do art school, but I did, my mother always drew, and my mother was always a maker. She's always be, had some project on the go where she was making something or painting something or sewing something or cooking something. I mean, she was just a very creative person. So I get it from there, really. So where did you grow up? Where, where, where uh, were you? Northwest London. Northwest London, okay. So were you good in school? Did you go to school? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I wasn't very good at school. My school report was so bad I had to go out of the borough because basically your school report didn't follow you outside the borough so I went to a tech college in Watford and did drama actually all I wanted to do I just I, I wanted to be an actor early on and to be a good actor yeah um, but it's it's acting's a craft you can interpret somebody's words you can interpret somebody's the, mm. the guy with the power is the guy with the pen 
it's like because they weren't my words and because it wasn't me leaving a mark like that I thought well I don't really want to do plus it's a lot of it's kind of fame based as well it's based on your personality and I'm yeah. quite prepared to excel at a job and you know hopefully gain oh. some accolades or some respect in the field that I'm doing but I don't necessarily want to walk down the street and have people point or yeah. come up to me and ask me for something it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not really do you remember when you made your first tag yeah tell me about that was it thrilling it was thrilling it was also terrifying because I have a very very shitty hand style so explain to our listeners what I, hand like, style means. Well, the hand style. So you, you freestylers see, with a, with yeah, a, when you, with a when can you, of paint. When you, yeah, when you when you write your name or your tag. But before we go on to your first tag, what was the bit like? Was it the, the gang you hung with? Yeah. And was it an anti-establishment thing, or was it? No, a, it was more a drunk coming home from the pub thing. Right. It's like you tag the toilets in the pub where you were drinking. Right. Get ejected. Did you do cock and balls? No. I love no. cock and balls. I They're love great. cock and balls. Yeah, so I've got yeah. a big collection of cock and balls. Yeah, so for those that don't know, uh, particularly the girls listening, they uh, know what no, cock and balls No, I know. Girls balls, do cock and cock balls. Cock and balls well. is basically, and hello, Owen Grant, my friend in Australia, if you're listening to this, is basically just, and it's a special it's a special thing. You have you have to draw a, a giant penis with two balls underneath and little bits. can have hair. Little bits of hair, little bits of hair, hair, hair and hair. then a little bit of jizz coming out the top like, of the penis. Oh, the jizz is optional. Jizz optional. Jizz, jizz optional. optional. Hair essential. Yeah. It's kind of. Why is cock? I read an article about this. Uh, I, I put it on, a link to it on the podcast blurb, but there was an article about why men draw cock and balls. It was really interesting. It was, it was quick. It's it quick. was easy. It's it was easy. But the funny thing is, there's quite a range of them. When yes, actually, I know. When you look at them, there's tall ones, skinny ones, fat ones. Yeah. There's kind of bent ones, straight yeah. ones. You know, nobody gets... They're always very cartoony. Yeah. And they're always pretty crap. Yeah. And it's there's some... There's a inf- shock element to it as well. Yeah, it's and kind of as an comedy. joy yes. in drawing them. <laughs> so when you get them paper... Yeah. And I've been with graffiti artists, him bad. You know, you, you know, you know yourself, him bad. I've been with him bad and a couple of other like, very talented artists. Yeah. And all of a sudden they get the paper out and next thing... Theresa May's hands like that <laughs> and she's got a cock and balls that's growing off George Osborne's chin yeah. and it's just the whole paper morphs into this um, quite you know some of these are quite anatomically correct yeah. drawings of, of male genitalia basically yeah. coming from all different parts of the body coming being the appropriate out of word pints, yeah. I mean anywhere it's like and it's so male, isn't it? I mean, women it look at it for fuck's sake, it you is know. Male, although you know. I do know a few girls that actually draw cock and balls. Right. I mean, okay. they Well, they have anyway. to be the exceptions that prove the rule. Yeah. But, like, you know. It's it's, we, I used to work with a really cool new media group that used to work out of uh, New York called uh, Graffiti Research Laboratory, or GRL. Very big deal at the time. They got made the front cover of Esquire magazine. They're very hot new media artists, and they... Uh, they were research fellows at iBeam, which is a new media lab in Chelsea Arts District. And they came up with this laser writer. So you have a video projector that projects black on a building. And then you have a camera above it that's looking for a point of contrast. You then have a laser pen and you draw something on the wall. Oh, right. And then they project, the camera picks up the point of the laser pen and draws in light projected through the projector yeah. a, a line where your that laser stays pen's there. gone that drips okay. so it really looks like paint they used to do demos of this we did the tape first thing graffiti. you do is cut absolutely <laughs> first thing so we got the projector outside the tape and we have you know, the, big, the big tower yeah. well obviously yeah, what exactly. are you going to do yeah. for a test yeah. is it working yeah. Big cock and balls, put it on the website. Next thing, the tater on us. You can't do yeah. that. It's like, but it's just yeah. a test. It's like a cock and balls is the testing, testing one, two, three, three. graffiti. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. What, what, what cap have I got on this can? Is yeah. it fat? Is it skinny? Yeah. Is it, is it, oh, it all looks like cock and balls. That's a skinny can. You know? Did you like the fact that we keep using the Daily Mail? That there was this kind of anti outrage yeah outrage yeah angry yeah. from Croydon that you would come home from the pub and you tag a wall on your way home and someone would be oh, pissed I mean, off I was sometimes you wake up in you were the a morning. juvenile delinquent yeah I mean I was early 20s so it was a little bit late for being <laughs> I'd done lots of other juvenile delinquent stupidness so this was kind of I suppose a bit tame compared to some of that but you sometimes you wake up in the morning and the th- wave of shame <laughs> that like you just think oh my god where did I paint last night 
oh god I've gone I've tagged every single door all the way to my house and then my house is the only street <laughs> the only door that hasn't got it it's like the, it's god. reverse Herod first day in, first day in university it was on a it was on a campus somewhere in West Sussex I'd just come back from Cuba after a holiday I was 27 years old going back to university and I've got a bottle of rum I'm on the train to go into my first day in university I meet an old friend Lee Stewart and we sit on the train we hadn't seen each other for about six months we drank three quarters of a bottle of rum on a 30 minute train journey right I get off at the other end I'm absolutely hammered go into the induction meeting fall asleep in the lecture wake up let's go to the bar drink like a lunatic in the bar because I'm nervous and it's like I've made myself look a bit of a fool already. Then, at about 11 o'clock at night, I decide I'm going to go and hit campus. I woke up in the morning. Hit being a technical term. For, for painting yeah. silly nonsense, drunken on walls. <laughs> and literally woke up the next morning. I couldn't tell anyone in the school that I was into graffiti at all. I just tagged everywhere around campus. It wasn't it was a sleepy little town in the middle of West Sussex Lake. It's not the time. You know, I had to hide whatever I was yeah. doing for the fact to take up oil painting just as a cover <laughs> you know I mean? to show what yeah just to show your that hands are yeah. spray paint no it's evil so go back to your first one you were saying oh it's just, been, it's just shameful crappy I mean you practice for ages you know you have a wall in your back garden or you you go up to a, a, a wasteland and you practice and practice and practice and you go out and then you in order to become invisible you have to get a few pints yeah a staggery bloke, so right. no one's really just going to make your doing. free hand even worse. Obviously, yeah. And then just you know, just rubbish. I mean, I so, I soon realised that basically my my hand style was fairly tame. You know, my writing's pretty atrocious. I was never going to win any hearts and minds with what came off the end of my hands. So because I cut stencils with my mum as a young kid, I thought, oh, and actually in town there were some guys. There was a really good stencil scene in Brighton. Fail, who you may have heard, the Fail Collective, uh, a girl called Ico, a guy called Bast, and there was a lot of really good, because it's a good art school as well, right in the centre of Brighton. Mm. It was quite a good little embryonic. There was street art wasn't really a thing, but there was a guy called Birdman that would do these quite weird illustrations and have the most heart-wrenching poetry handwritten out in emulsion yeah. on the wall it was just it was, it was beautiful stuff and I suddenly thought well yeah tags I like the joy in tags I like you know I like graffiti but these guys are putting finished artworks on the street they're, they're doing all the work in their home and then they're spraying these things on the street and they take less than two minutes yeah. to paint a totally beautiful thing yeah, yeah something that's you know and also something recognizable that's un, only there uncluttered by the coding yeah. that happens in graffiti because a lot of people will write when they go out tagging they'll go out and write three or four names in a the night they'll throw, get up all their crew if they're going out on their own and they'll get up all their crew they'll write each one of their tags in the crew also helps if you get caught then they don't know which one's yours so I wanted to talk about that is how much of the early when you were doing a thrill was the the thrill of not getting caught yeah, or getting it's a caught crime. that's a huge motivator is it yeah it is definitely with tagging and just putting stuff around when you get down to stencils and things like that i think there's a communication element yeah. with the general public you're trying to make a point need, yeah it's, or you're trying to deliver a message or a feeling or yeah. something like that with this artwork whereas with tagging it's more much more about territory and yeah. So the V word vandalism, like so. That vandalism. Was, so yeah. wait, 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 what do you when you well, hear it's all that vandalism? Word. Vandalism is something that is where you have changed the shape of somebody else's property in some way. If you don't have the agreement of the person, if it's an unsanctioned work, it is one graffiti, and it is by its nature vandalism. Right. So if Banksy comes along and paints on your house and you haven't asked him to do it, even though that is probably doubled the, the <laughs> price of your house, yeah, it's still vandalism. It's within your right to clean it off. Is that the legal term? I think graffiti is a in-house term. I mean, I'm not sure whether any of these huge murals can be called graffiti because they're yeah. sanctioned, often funded pieces of work. Yes. Graffiti is something that where it's not supposed to be. It's, it's, it comes from the Italian, the writing on the wall. That in its nature is vandalism yeah. because you're not, it's not your wall. Did you like the famous um, Life of Brian sketch when you were yeah. growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Romanus eos domum. Yeah. <laughs> Romans go, go to theirs. What? No, no. <laughs> How do they go? Yeah. yeah. And no, if it's not brilliant. done by sunset, I'll chop your balls, balls off right out of thousand yeah. times. 
beautiful. So. One of the th- one of the stories I have about uh, one of my favorite pieces uh, for any Australian Sydney people listening is when I first went to Aus- uh, Australia. I was living in in um, the eastern suburbs, and there's a, a sort of a, a junction called Edgecliff. And in Edgecliff, there was a major traffic arterial road into the eastern suburbs. There was this kind of grey wall, 12 foot by 6 foot. And there was a guy called Dutoud who, who, who painted a picture of a woman with her back to the traffic. She's very elongated and a cat. I remember when I first got there, I drove by it and I really liked it. And then I drove by it again and I, I thought, that looks like it's changed. Mm. So then I kept a really close eye on it. And then I noticed it got changed every week or every mm. 10 days and it was always the same woman with her back to you mm. she's tall and long flowy arms and beautiful mm. and I was coming home one night at 5 in the morning in a cab hammered and there was a fucking guy at it All right. so I just like I was a mile and a half from my house I just fucking stopped here and I ran back hammered and I said I've been driving past this for a year and I don't know what the story is mm. and he said um and he was he was he, he has his own studio and he talked about a, a woman he loved and all this and we sat there and I had a poem in my uh, wallet that I read to him and gave to him and we were like sitting there in this re- it was like a movie right and he said that basically what happens is people come and fuck with it but yeah. they never fuck with the fundamentals of it they yeah. keep the woman they keep the cat and he allows people to and occasionally some dick will come around and just fuck it all up yeah, and he'll just right. come and clean it back yeah, up yeah. And, and it's become a kind of a thing do you know the work? Do you know the work of Stickman? I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, for many, many years, his main job has been going around painting off cock and balls mm. on Stickman. Because right. basically, you see this Stickman there, yeah, and it's like, oh, I got to give him the cock and balls. Right. So it's like he maintains his work all over London. I mean, right. now his canvases sell for thirty, forty thousand pounds. I mean, they're yeah. just Stickman people. <laughs> yeah. But really, I mean, oh yeah, they don't look like other stick people. You know, he's very protective of his work. He really does travel all over the place and make sure that, you know, that they are as he's painted. There's quite a few people that maintain their works. Well, the other great one was Eternity. There was a guy who, who, who wrote Eternity across everywhere in Sydney okay. to the point where the, the, the Millennium Changeover, Harbour Bridge, Fireworks, he died, I think, and they, just, right. they, they did it okay. for him. So it's, it, I love when the forces of government way in to say oh no no this is really important you know a part of our culture so you so you had your first uh, experiences with it so does it bite you yeah no it becomes it, you, you can get very obsessed with this stuff yeah I mean I'm still when like, did you say, say to yourself oh I'm definitely going that's that's my calling uh, well I went to art school and then embarked on a kind of a career of work, working in kind of very ad hoc industries like the events game and stuff like that so I could work for three months pull a lot of money either go off travelling for six months or put on an art show and so I was working to maintain my work all the time and eventually I had a child and uh, I had to well I had to make a decision either to do this you know I'd been working as an artist under the name C6 for ten years and because it was very intermittent but what it achieved wasn't very much because there was always this split attention between having to earn some money and I wouldn't take Arts Council funding I've mm. only taken one Arts Council um, grant in my life because I think if the government are paying you to do art then you must be doing something wrong so but what, so okay stick on that for a second what about the idea that if they let you do the art you want to do and they're I mean it's a stipend well, right it's basically saying like we believe this guy is good yeah, enough but you have to be really good at filling in forms <laughs> yeah really good at filling in forms really good at sucking cock <laughs> yeah? yeah and have no point to make at all yeah if Damn. you're upsetting people that's you're not going to get Arts Council funding for it if you're fighting the government you're not going to get Arts Council funding for it if you're not doing it in an Arts Council approved venue you won't get any funding for it. So already you've got you've got a very elite club that's being sat on by very art school trained. You know they're very Church of High Art. They're very White Cube. They're very. Yeah. Although now now the Arts Council is almost like a it's like social services because every artist has to have the word community and outreach in their proposal. Right. You know if they're not helping some 
the school kids that don't give a shit about art, then mm. you know they're not fulfilling a brief and they won't get their money. I, I got invited to actually go to number uh, number eleven and talk yeah. to the chancellor about why I was got invited by the arts council because I don't believe there should be an arts council. They couldn't find anyone that would say that as an artist. Right. And I think if you're going to have an arts council, why not have three arts councils? Why not have them all competing against each other? And then each year, one of them gets the funding for the next two years, and the other ones get less funding. Based so on... Well, just on effectiveness, interaction, engagement, yeah. quality. You yeah. can all tell quality. It reminds me, that those of you I know who listen, who are involved in the ad business, are, are quite numerous. And uh, Dotmaster was invited to Cannes this year by... Uh, uh, an ad agency. IPG Media. Yeah, I was going to say an ad agency who won't be mentioned. McCann's. McCann's. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, he went there and did a. You know, this is the this is the fuck up business thing about advertising that I kind of hate because we we find something that we think is kind of cool and cultural and we kind of hijack it and dead squeeze steal it the and, creative yeah, power Yeah, kill it, it and stick it nappy logo on it or something yeah but um he was doing this like i could see i could see the brief because i've been in the ad business what if we got a cool avant-garde street artist to come and paint outside our hotel every day for all our clients and the people you know and i slagged uh, dot master because he's a friend of mine about fucking selling out and i didn't go to can this year but he did and i think <laughs> i don't need to be going again but there's a really funny interview Apparently, online. Apparently, I'm that, in frame for next year. So there's, there you go. okay, sorry about that. Okay, McCann's is a great agency. Yeah, it's a great uh, agency. Sorry, we great, love McCann's. But, but um, you there, was a, there was a, there's a great interview online with him um, somewhere. If if, you, if anyone wants to bother trying to find it, where a guy from the agency is interviewing him at the end of his stint, and he says, "What was um, the one thing you learned or something about uh, this trip to Cannes?" And you said, "It's all in the sign-off." Your approvals process. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's. A bit you've got imagine. a great approvals process. Yeah. You know, and, uh, well, just imagine you've got you've got IPG, yeah, who's yeah. like I still don't understand. It's a holding company or something. Then you've got Universal McCann, which is the is the creative, yeah. is it not? And then you've got uh, yeah. Innovative, which is the something else, which I don't really. Yeah. So you've got these three different people, and you've got an events organization team. And then you've got a client handler within that event, yeah, uh, event. and it's like so you you before something even goes to the client, the event company doesn't fit, fulfill their brief, which I totally understand. Right. And then they say, "Oh, we'll make these changes." Yeah. Then it goes to the client. Then you've got three people kicking the shit yeah, out yeah, of your yeah, stuff, yeah. and it's just and like, in this case, by the way, the client is an ad agency who continually complain about the fact that clients constantly fucking approve the work. So fuck. Uh, I, I suggested, uh, because I've been to Cannes for many years, uh, he, uh, Dot Master gave me a bit of a call about what it was going to be like, and I said, you should just do a giant cock and balls of Martin Sorrell and really fucking put the cat among the pigeons. But he didn't do that. But anyway, um, so you're, so you're, so anyway, I hope that hasn't jeopardized your chances next year. It wouldn't have gone past the approval year. process. It wouldn't have gone past, well, no, because IPG is not Martin Sorrell. Anyway, oh, never mind. God. But um, uh, that's an inside baseball joke okay. there. Anyway, um, so you're, at some point you had to go straight, right? Uh, kind of straight. Yes. Yeah. And that's quite weird. You know, coming from a, like a subversive thing and saying, well, I'm going to stick this stuff in a gallery and then all of a sudden, who's it done by? It's like, well, you've got to have a name and actually, you know, then pricing your work's really tricky. And also, you know, you go out on the street and you paint something that's recognisably you yeah. as vandalism yeah. on somebody else's property yeah. and then not a million miles away, you've got exactly the same canvas <laughs> sitting on a gallery which you've for 10 promoted <laughs> no but you've promoted saying you are going to be there on that day yeah. I mean it doesn't take it doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to no. try and find you does it so how many up. times have you been arrested uh, a couple a couple tell me what that was like tell me the big one the heist no was the, there one I'm, I'm making that the up the stupidest one was we, we were painting uh, some friends of mine were squatting just up the road off Kingsland Road they were having a big party they've been in the property for quite a long time and they said oh come and paint something on the front of the building now a friend of mine had just died from a heroin overdose and I could see this party getting out of order so I thought oh I'm going to paint a bouncer basically over the doors there was this huge kind of cartoon gorilla so you had to walk through his arms to get into the thing but right. also it was a giant monkey off my mate's back so we, I painted this thing uh, me and an artist called Teddy Baden there's a, a Travis Perkins around the corner so we hired a set of triple 22 rung Zarge ladders 
walked them round the street, put them <laughs> up in the street, started paying the front of the building. Just up the road is the car park for the police station, which we didn't know. So painting, 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 painting. I've nearly finished this thing. It was a three and a half stories high. Okay. A big, so a big gorilla. And all of a sudden, the owner of the building turned up. A big Norwegian guy. A big so, gorilla from Norway. He's a, he was a massive man and very angry. One, he had squatters in his building. Two, he had two lunatics paint in front of his building. So he's come to me and he said, like, oh, they're all London stocks. London stock is a yellow brick is it and they're x amount protected per thousand. Blah, blah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can't, they're not making them anymore so they right. recycle a lot of these bricks and he was saying well, no, you, but you've painted all over the london stocks and it's like we're going to tear this building down and, and i said well look, i'll give you a hundred pounds he said look let's say i can't hundred bricks i've ruined a hundred bricks here's a hundred pounds sorry for inconvenience i got given permission by the uh, Squad occupants <laughs> yeah by the occupants of the pr- i said in hindsight I, it was a bit stupid to take their word for it very sorry to inconvenience you you know, I've actually hired this ladder, paid for the paint myself. I'm yeah. offering to make a uh, recompense for the damage I've done. Uh, so then you find the police. Who didn't have to come far. No, they didn't have to come far. <laughs> so they turned up and like, basically they, uh, they said, Who's, who gave you permission? I said, Barbara, a friend of mine, um, she gave me permission. So they all got us together and I said, look, guys, you were holding the ladder. You gave me permission. Neither of you did anything wrong. I'll take everything on the chin. Because I've already put was it getting up. fighty and shouty? No, or was it, but the police have a certain way of dealing with it. So you all right. get stuck into the back of vans and driven back to the nick. Yeah. So we've gone into the nick, and I've turned around and said, "Well, look, yeah, on hindsight, it wasn't a good idea to take the word for the yeah. spots that we could paint. Uh, I've offered to clean the bricks. I'll even go back and clean the. You get jet wash and take it off for you. You know, I don't. You know, do you need a lawyer? No, I don't need a lawyer. I don't think I've done anything wrong. However, Barbara had been training for a climate camp for the summer. So the first thing she said was, I need a lawyer, I'm not saying. So there we had to wait eight hours in the police station in order for a duty solicitor to come. We sat down, gave our story to him, gave to the police. The police said, you know, in hindsight, don't you think it was? I said, yeah, 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 fair enough. But, you know, every hindsight's brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You, in hindsight. In hindsight. <laughs> so we actually got let off. And <laughs> because she wasted everybody's time, she got caution. <laughs> she wasn't even painting. Right. So it's like, it's the, the, the way they handle these things, it's always by the book. And But how many, like, uh, how often do graffiti artists get put in prison now? Uh, Vamp was the last one I heard of. He got five years. Really? Yeah, Fisto was one of the first to serve. They, I think they sentenced him to ten, and I think he got down to five. He was everywhere, though. Sheffield, right. painted from Sheffield. So it feels to me that there's a sentence equivalent on how fucking irritating your tag is. <laughs> is that fair? Yep. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, there's probably a judge who'd go, it's not that bad. Like the, when no. Banksy started hitting big, people were fucking taking down walls and bringing it away brick by brick. Right? They were, yeah, they, yeah, you know, yeah. they were cutting up pavements. But like lots of people, they've, they've been even recently, he did that one in Folkestone. I can't remember. I think it was two old women looking at a plinth that the thing on top of the plinth had been buffed out on the wall. Right. So it was a stencil of a plinth, like an art exhibit that had been buffed. Yeah. And the folks in council painted it over. And there was a huge, like, uproar Kerfuffle. in town. And they wanted uh, Banksy to come back and paint it. Of course, he's not yeah. going to come back and paint it. Yeah. But it's like they were all kind of having a go at folks in council. So it's, it's, it's like he was making a point about work being buffed. His work got buffed and... It's quite the other self- thing I want to talk to you about was exit through the gift shop, right? Because yeah. I remember watching the thing going, this is fucking weird. And halfway through, I went, oh, it's just a mockumentary. This is all bullshit. And you said it's not all no, bullshit. That's true. So this guy was going around videoing his whole yeah, life. Yeah. And then he did become an artist then he backed st- by Banksy. And well, then he started, yeah. What was his name again? Uh, uh, Thierry. No, Brainwash. Brainwash, yeah. Brainwash is, uh, but his name's Cherry. Oh, sorry, Cherry, I forgot. Probably doesn't want to broadcast anymore. But like, he, so th- suddenly he was exhibiting in New York and he was charging 50 grand for he his... He did. Cherry comes from uh, a wealthy Jewish family in L.A. And they uh, own quite a few properties. I'd met him a few times. L.A., I was making a film in the on the Salt Flats in Utah. And we did a road trip down to L.A., I got there, there was a gallery that I was working with in LA that owed me money. So I turned, I got the money off them and I said, look, come on, you're a street art gallery, give me a wall. And they went, 
we, we, we don't we don't deal with that type of stuff but we know this guy Thierry Brainwash that does all the spotting for Banksy and Shep and all the people that come into town we'll put you in touch with him so I went out painting with him and he had a sticker of him with a camera on his shoulder that an illustrator had drawn and he'd made some big paste ups of it and he pasted them up a few times and he kind of really was joking that he wasn't really an artist but he was like anyone can be a street artist this is the kind of what yeah. he got out of his knowledge of it and he uh, had a vintage clothing shop on Melrose that I think he sold back to his family for about a million and put all that money into a show at the ABC studios now when we finished painting he said I'll oh, come back to the studio come back to where I'm going to have my show you can do a couple of works on canvas and I'll give you a couple of works and we'll do a swap so I got back there and it's like it's a full tele- uh, television studio that's yeah. just gutted and it's like, when's your show? And it's like two months' time. It's like, this place is like, it's fucking huge. This place is ginormous. It's like, and he just built, he built the one bit, which was Dennis Hopper's Nighthawks. That, that one wall was built, but nothing else was done. It's like, well, I'm looking at this guy thinking, you're absolutely mental. This is yeah. never going to happen. And he phoned Banksy and got a quote off Banksy. He phoned Shep and got a quote off Shep because it was like, I'm doing a show. You know, they kind of gave a quote. I mean, they both probably regret it now because they spawned a monster he got all the right press involved he, yeah. he, he knew the giggle he was very well connected so, to me uh, coming from my business that's astonishing it's, it's so yeah. hard to do that yeah and so yeah. where is he now is he still tipping he's away he's still yeah he's still, I mean I think he's made his money right it's very generic I mean, the other two are Shepard Ferry and the Barack Obama thing I mean that, that was a big leap from street art into the, yeah but that's the, clever Obama wasn't it yeah 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 What's the state of the, you know, graffiti street art industry, if you can call it that? Or, well, I think it's very strong. I think it's very strong. I so I think I, there's a certain sense that the Daily Mail element have stopped mm. being as fucking worked whiny. up about it and yeah. whiny and and yeah. it's it, you could probably parallel it with things like pot in in. in well, I think in, we're close to pot being yeah legalized, legalized yeah. and it's a similar kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah. like it's not really harming anyone. Unless you really go overboard, in which case you'll be arrested and chucked in prison. And yeah. The other thing you're interested in and have been involved in and I'm interested in talking to you about is uh, Glastonbury. Yeah. Tell me a bit about how that came about and what you do there. Glastonbury, I am... Apparently, I'm the art director for the Unfair Ground, which is a, a lawless zone in, <laughs> in, in Glastonbury. Uh, the dark heart of the carnival. Uh, something wicked this way comes carny gypsy sinister deliberately scary the quick uh, family history was at Glastonbury 20 years ago there used to be something called uh, Lost Vagueness which was a uh, they had a casino they had a chapel where you could get married there were lots of different attractions there uh, it was a very traveller, like new age traveller, peace convoy type of group of people that came together. A lot of them lived in trucks. They made this very weird, immersive performance space, and uh, it, it was very, very famous. Well, that kind of imploded due to the extreme personalities involved. Roy, yes, I mean you. And uh, there's a film out at the moment, actually, that they've made that's very good. It's called lost in vagueness or something but very good I saw I went to the premiere uh, a couple of months ago straight after vagueness uh, a field called Trash City started now that's Trash City's always been a very the mutoid waste department and that was all kind of making sculptures and experiences out of scrap metal the Trash City field had the gay disco it had a burlesque tent it had sculptures by the mutoids it had a couple of venues and then that split apart. But all the southeast corner in Glastonbury is basically part of that family. You've got Shangri-La, the Common, which is Steve Bedlam from Spiral Tribe, Block Nine, and then you've got the Unfair Ground now. So when Joe Rush wanted to stop doing the um, Trash City, Sam Haggerty and I said, "Well, we want to do these sideshows. This kind of like we want to bring a kind of carnival festival thing." And we knew what we wanted to do, but we couldn't come up with a name. 
And Joe, who's always really good at this type of stuff, said, oh, why don't we call it the unfair ground? It's like, oh, okay. So that kind of set the Way tone. before Dismayland. Yeah, well, way before Dismayland, <laughs> Thanks you if you're listening. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He'll know where he got the idea. I know, I know. And Sam Haggerty will definitely tell you where he got the idea. Mm. And so we started this thing, and it's it's pretty silly sideshows that are kind of knock them downs or yeah. through, a, through a hoop or... There's another one, pop the new one called Pop the Chicken, where you've got two pumps, and there's, you, you both race against each other, and there's a, a latex glove that yeah. you've got to pop, right. and they throw <laughs> feathers at you, and this is it's, it's just it's it's that. So do you have to come up with new ideas for all this? Yeah, yeah, every year. Yeah, right? the potato brilliant. shy, where you right. throw a potato at a potato to win a potato. Brilliant, love that. There's, that would uh, go well in Ireland. That Electric would do. picnic, maybe. Well, we've yeah, we've, <laughs> we've, we've been talking to Jerry Fish actually. Right, Jerry Fish. Yeah, Jerry Fish. Yeah, Mob Bug Club. Yeah. Yeah. That happened, and we've got two. There's the Battle Bus stage, which uh, I'm around seeing a lot of people that go to Glastonbury don't even fucking encounter no. this. No, they don't know where it comes. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean they don't even get there. No, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. You don't. You have like, to be in the know about it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a long old march from the pyramid stage up to us. Yeah, and it's, you'd have to know what was up there in order to bother, especially in the rain. Why yeah. would you walk all that yeah. way? It's just grim. So before we finish, yes, there's a little kid out there. I ask this of everybody, and it's just fucking intriguing to ask it of you. There's a little kid out there who's 16 and he's tagging. What do you advise him, or what do you send back to your younger self? Learned? Go big, go big, go big, go quick. <laughs> go Meaning. big and quick. Meaning? Meaning, don't stop pissing around doing small things. Paint as big as you possibly can. Make it as visible as it possibly can be, and make sure everybody can bloody see it. Well, that was a very different point with Shawnee B we just had there. Brilliant. Enjoyed that conversation. Anyone who is in any way interested in the dark arts of graffiti will have loved that, as will a lot of the Daily Mail readers who yeah. have been listening in. Yeah, we want to see those letters. Yeah. Really write in. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think. Send all your inquiries to the Daily Mail. Shawnee B at the Daily Mail. Yeah. That's the end of the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>